And when they switched it in the heavenlies, God said, now I'm rebuking the devourer for your sake and God shall give you plenty. And when they switched it in the heavenlies, God said, now I'm rebuking the devourer for your sake and God shall give you plenty. Praise go up and your blessings come down. Blessings, 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 blessings. Hey guys, how are you? God bless you. We're just going to go ahead. <clears throat> Bless you, bless you, bless you. Hold on, let me see where everybody is calling from. Two seconds. I'm missing one of my phones. So we may have to do Facebook. Um, mm -mm -mm. Let me see real quickly. Let me attach one of my phones. I can do it another way. Everybody starts calling it in. Look at you guys, look at you guys. Great, great, great. Let me add Facebook people in. <clears throat> And then I attach my own phone for music till my people figure out what they're doing. And we are going to, let me see if I can add this real quickly. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, 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 yes. How is everybody doing? <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm good, thank you for asking. <laughs> Thank Good you. Good in yourself. Good. Um, kind of with the exception of, I think I got in about 2 2.30 this morning, but it is well. All right. So I found some music. I'll be right in. Let me see. Mm. All right. Let's see where everybody's calling from. Let me just grab our Facebook friends real quick to... 
Uh, and it's one more time. All right, two seconds, guys. Okay. People are still coming in, so I want to give them a hot second. Let me admit them in. All right, let me see where everybody's at. Why does that sound so weird? I don't know. Let me see. I don't know why the speaker sounds so weird. But it's okay. We're going to get it together. All right. Let me start my. Let's try once more. Once more. Once more. Once more. The devil came and tried to trick me and say it wouldn't happen. It looked like it wasn't possible. I wonder what that's weird. Is the volume up on your phone, Prophet? It is, but you know what? My team's supposed to have their stuff together. So hopefully somebody on that end can do it right. Cause I'm like, uh, I saw a struggling. So I said, let me try to fix it. It's not that, it's the speakers acting weird. So I'm like, it's the JBL and I'm in a hotel. And I'm not supposed to teach today, but like given last night when Papa Lope was teaching. <laughs> can't use them because the, 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 the what you call it goes to them so okay guys we're gonna go ahead if we use them um the photo goes to that um okay all right guys let's do this <clears throat> i'm excited i have something i want to share with you guys that's why i came on this morning i'm supposed to be on vacation but really it probably is going to happen next week so i see a bunch of you guys coming in i'm excited about that let me just call we call roll call where everybody's calling in from real quickly i see las vegas trey bless you my son nicole nyc uh also florida and let me see uh brenda kim in anaheim texas hillary uh let me see let me see, we have Ontario, uh, Becky, we have Jamel, Jamie, Florida, Texas, Arizona, um, uh, uh, I see Alexis in, in Arizona, I see Los Angeles, Latasha, Orange County, I'm looking at uh, Miami, Drika, Selena in Portland, good morning, from um, LA, Tracy, I see still people coming in and our poor little Instagram people haven't had anybody since last week. So I'm gonna try to grab them. I see a bunch of people on Facebook too. So let me try to uh, do both and then let me look here. I see Mississippi, Mary, hello, bless you. I see Spanish Town, Jamaica, Dion, as well as Valone, uh, she is in, uh, let me see, where's Valone? She's in Florida too. Okay. There's more, but I'm gonna try to do use, utilize my, um, hold on. Here we go. Let me just put on some Instagram. All right, guys. So let me, let's go jump into it. I want to show you guys a couple things that God was showing me that um, it's going to be a real blessing to you guys. And um, last night 
I got to go to Papa Lowe's. We're going to have a uh, uh, meeting for those that are spiritual kids. So there's some people that are just, you know, visiting and learning and growing. And then there are some people that are spiritual kids. And we want to make sure that we, you're giving this information out to some, to, to like spiritual kids only, he was saying. So we're going to have a meeting. Um, this evening, I believe it is. And so I want to be, I want to talk with you guys and tell you the stuff that he, he um, was disclosing and it was really blowing, blew my mind. Um, wow. I, I'm kind of shocked. Let me see what can I share with all of you guys. Um, let me see what parts I can share. So uh, I was really blessed last night. Um, I went to my spiritual father's house. He was like, come here. I was like, oh, I'm thinking like, what? I was all nervous. You guys like, what? What I do? <laughs> I don't know if anybody else gets those feelings. Like, I might be like, hey, if I call my phone, but I called you guys be funny or I message you guys. Look at, I'm looking at some of your guys' faces. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was like, I was like, Monica's like, why are you shaking? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I need to know why, why I'm being summoned. <laughs> and um, it was a very serious moment um, of like elevation. It wasn't about, about um, the encounter. It was about the years of service really it was. And um, I've taught you guys a lot of things. But I'm trying to tell you guys, the things I've been teaching you guys will elevate you in the spirit. And there's some things that we cannot get unless we do these things I like I'm teaching. Like when my sons called me yesterday, right when we got off, and he's like, Monty, I have to talk to you. He's like, I need to apologize. <laughs> and, you know, the only way to change is to change. And if we really want to be spiritually where we really want to be, then we have to grow, period. There is like no other way except for us to grow up in the things of God. Because you got to realize when we got here, we came in the flesh. We came as, as fleshly as you can be. You came under the unction of what Adam did. We walked into sin. You were born into sin. I don't care how good of a person you are and how good you think we are. We need Jesus Christ because he was our savior. He's the plan, God's plan for salvation. We need Jesus. And so you have to actually come the way he says to come. So here I am. Um, it's by God's grace. Part of the things I realized I've grasped, God has graced me with that I try to teach you. I was just, I feel like I was born with it in my DNA. Because my some of these things my mom could tell you I was three years old. And um, she would say my brother would never ever consider me. Like he was just stingy. So he was always saying, no, I couldn't have any. And I was always trying to fight for the fact that my brother needed one too. Like I would not come home with a candy just for me. I would have to bring one for my brother. So that's something that's grace inside of me. Some of you guys are sharp. Some of you guys can do math real good. Some of you guys can sing real good. That's grace. That's not you. That's grace. Some of you can write real neat. I mean, look, I look at people, my handwriting is so messy sometimes. I'm like, what am I writing? Uh, I can't read my own handwriting. And I'm like, and then I see some people, they like got this beautiful calligraphy and I'd be like, how do they write like that? It's just your grace. You know, some of you look at their hands, their hands are real pretty and, and it's just got grace on them. You see people that can read at like two and three years old and they just learn real fast. That's the grace. And so we can make a mess around and act like it's us when it was something given to us from heaven. Okay. So I, I really, some of the things that I teach you guys about um, when I was 12 years old, you guys, I would do some things that got me jobs where they would fight over me. 12 years old. Nobody taught me that. How would I know to do that? I would be a babysitter, you guys. The babysitters would fight and do a war, a bid war over me. Because not only would their kids be happy, they would come home and I was a housekeeper, you guys. I would have the whole, I'd be vacuuming. I would do all this stuff. The house would be clean and they'd be like, oh, wait a minute. The dishes would be done. The clothes would be folded. How at 12 years old do you know how to do those things? I don't know. It was God's grace. I knew what the people needed because I could look around and see. 
Some people yeah. lack discernment. They don't know where they need to be, what needs to happen next. Um, like, and so, so some things I have embedded in me, God gave me from a little kid. And my mom said I was never stingy. I was always trying to give away everything. I was, I remember getting spankings for, if I was getting fed, my friends didn't have any, I, I was feeding my friends with my mom's money. And then I would get a spanking for spending my mom's money, okay? I would just do stuff. And so some of the principles God gave me, so I don't know if it's fair um, or not fair, but I still have to choose to act on those things. And so um, I had a lot of testing, you guys. Nobody gets close to my spiritual father without testing. Nobody gets close to him. And if you are in the flesh, if you are angered, if you're easily angered, if you are, are uh, cannot be corrected, if you um, are needy or very sensitive, like if somebody doesn't call you back, if they don't do what you want, um, there's no way you can get close to him at all. There's not. Because he, he has to protect that anointing that's on his life. Somebody cannot come for the wrong reasons. He will be. And he always says, he says, I'm very slow to promote because more time you don't get you time you take people will reveal who they really are. So you guys know sometimes like, we all rushed into relationships thinking this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then you're like three months in, you're like, oh, wait a minute, who is that beast? And it was somebody else that you didn't know it was then there. So I say all this to say is the Lord will allow you to be tested. And I'm going to show you that the angel will test you. Well, through the testing, basically some things began to happen. And, um, and, and God is so good because it took me several years. I first met Prophet Lovi like seven, six to seven years ago when he was in the house teaching you guys in the house before he even had the church. When everybody would congregate in the house and be in the rooms, he would just walk through the rooms, you guys. And I didn't stick then. So some things you have to do, if you want to remain, you have to stick. And when I just was pop up here and there, didn't work, okay? It came a time in the season when I knew God said, be there. And whatever you do, I, you need to know where God told you to be and get what God wants you to get while you're there. Because you can get elevated by a person but just because you're there. You can get elevated in the spirit realm because you're committed. And I knew I was called there because one day I was having the worst day of my life. I remember I was laying on my bed crying out to God. And I heard God tell me, go to find Prophet Lobi. And I hadn't seen him or talked or been there in like four years or something like that. And all of a sudden, um, I, I look, started looking him up and he I found out that he was at the address one digit off from my home address and it was on Victory Boulevard. And God said to me, your victory is there. So I went and it's on tape. And I was like, I was like, it's two hours to drive there. I was really in the flesh. OK, because I was in the flesh that day. I remember it. Because I was like, oh, it took me two hours to get here. The kids got school tomorrow. This is a good service. I like it, but I'm going home. And I remember thinking to myself, well, you know, if he has word for me and God wants me to be there, he'll speak to me. So I walked all the way up to go get the children out of daycare. On my way back, I was getting ready to walk out the door and he called me and he prophesied to me and he prophesied that there was something in my room that was demonic that somebody gave me. He told me what my bed was. He told me what this thing was. He told me there's a thing right there in the corner that's right next to your bed. And I was like, I knew exactly what it was and didn't realize the person that gave it to me. It was just a, a a trinket to hold the books up and stuff. But that thing was demonic and that person practiced witchcraft. And so everybody in the house was sick. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you so much. So literally God was teaching me by that accurate prophetic word. I was sick and other people were sick in my house because an item I had in my house. So what I had to do was I had to remove it from my house. When I removed it from my house, everybody got healed in my house. So Amen. you think you're not going to go back? Uh, so I was committed. I went back. You know, it wasn't just that. All of a sudden, everybody was healed. He also told me my son had like something right here on his arm. 
And, and he said, it hasn't been going away, that it was not of the Lord. And it was not, it's just true. I was like, what is this thing on your arm? Is this like, it was a line forming. It was real strange. And my son knew exactly what it was. He said, it's going to heal. And it healed. Like he told me like five things that day and I went home and my life was changed and I, I felt so different. I was so excited the next week. I ran to church. I didn't care if it was going to take three hours on the highway in LA out of my life every week. I never missed a week for a two years until the pandemic. If I was in town, I was in church. If I was in town, I was in church. I had commitment. I'm giving you guys the principles and dedication. I knew God sent me there and it wasn't easy to get there. I'm not looking for the easy route. You got to hear real quick. I'm not looking for the easy route because if you want the easy route, the easy route tends to your flesh. It doesn't tend to your soul, man. So, so the devil hopes you quit because it's not going to be easy to get there or to do it. So maybe 6 a.m. in the morning is not easy for you. And maybe, maybe seven, seven o'clock at night isn't easy for you, but however, you're committed and you're dedicated because you know there's something here. God brought me here. You have to know that God brought you there. When God brings you there, then your breakthrough is there. Your direction is there. And so uh, um, literally, I remembered, I was like, I got to go back and find each one of them. The first time he called me up, he was like, you. He was like, you, my daughter. He called me as his daughter. And so certain, your spiritual parent would know that they, you guys are connected and you'll know that you're connected to them. Sometimes you guys ask and there's other times that I ask you or I just know you're my spiritual child. But literally he called me, he said, come. And he said, God showed me, you're gonna be one of the ones that's gonna carry my word all over the world. And I remember it was one of my first few weeks, but then after that, I'm thinking like, okay, so we're gonna mentor, you're gonna help me, you're gonna call me, you're gonna do this. No, you just, I just kept coming, kept coming. I would get the word, apply the word. Every now I'm sewing, right? I'm sewing, of course my finances are all jacked up. I'm sewing. So I'm committed to sewing. I'm committed to offering. Now at this time, I go to a different church too, but this church I was going to, there was really like, it, it, it didn't last very long. I was just going there because I had been going there for so long. It was a habit. It was a ritual, but I knew I was connected and joined to this church. Matter of fact, I joined the church immediately because I never could join this other church I was at for three years. So I joined the church. I got committed. I got dedicated. I showed up every week. And then I started to see, and there was no place for me to serve you guys. There was no place for me to serve. Maybe you feel like there's no place you could serve in this ministry, but that's not true. We have a lot of areas you could serve. I mean, from it, whether it's feeding the homeless, uh, whether it's 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 doing um, um, calls and checking on people, there's always something to do. There's people that aren't here that send us artwork and things and videos that live in different in in Florida and different area. We get our videos and stuff from Florida. Papa gets his stuff from Africa. Somebody sends a thumbnail every single 15 minutes after he gets it and he posts it. Don't think that you can't serve because you're not right here. There's always somewhere to serve. Just during encounter, Latasha became the dance ministry. Um, but, you know, minister, she is leading that, but it's always an opportunity for you to serve. Mama Minnie's now doing, you know, whether it's tutoring or whatever, that is helping. You have no idea. There's always some area you could serve. So I'm looking for an area to serve because I understand service is going to usher me into where I'm supposed to be. As you serve and you find a place you can serve, your life will begin to change in ministry. You have to find a place where you're dedicated, where you're committed, where you know where you're supposed to be, you know? And so, I literally couldn't find any place because everybody was looking. If you guys saw, like we were talking about Rico yesterday, Rico was like, you know, he, we, we've been waiting for a chance to serve at, at church, but there was no place to serve because every spot is filled. There's like 60 workers at work at there. So when, when he got an opportunity, he, he, he told anybody, he said, whenever mama T needs something, he like, he, he was smart. Because what he did was Papa began to call on him too, just since since Saturday, because if it's all somebody has to do is notice that you have the heart, that you have the drive, that you have the passion, you're not scared of people's feelings being hurt, you will know what it's supposed to be, you know, and what's great about it is the flesh in another person will rise up when they can't take help from another person. So in the midst of leadership, you learn that to follow directions, follow orders, and it's all for the purpose of why you're there. Your purpose, you learn to submit. So these things I began to learn back when I was with Joni Ames Ministry, back when I was got to go see Bob Jones, and back when I got to, to meet these great prophets and some of them have passed on, I learned, she said, the reason I brought you up was because one, you knew when to talk, when not to talk. You also didn't speak about other things. If I saw something negative, let me give you an example. Nobody knows this prophet, but she was talking to me one day and she called somebody a B-I-T-C-H, right? 
I never, ever, if somebody is a prophet, I know, I never, ever repeated it. I never put it out there and I never thought she wasn't a woman of God because I saw her in her flesh. Amen. People would have been like, oh, she's not a woman of God. King David uh, killed somebody and he also um, there's a, there, he also slept with a, mar a married woman, but God said he's still after a man of my, my own heart. Ah, how could you say that? Wait a minute. So if you can't see the person or they make one or two mistakes and you, you write them off, then you never can see them in their nakedness, which means you can never be elevated because they will see you in your nakedness here or there. And they have to recognize you're still called, you're still chosen, you're still my power and authority. You still have all these things. So if you are in the flesh, you're going to fall off easily if you see somebody that's a leader in the flesh. If I saw something, I kept it to myself. If it was time for me to leave a ministry, I didn't talk about it to anybody else. I didn't call anybody else. I wasn't calling, trying to prophesy to nobody else for where I left. I didn't try to say anything. I moved on by myself unless it was a very, very, very close friend. And I still did not share why I was leaving if God called me to leave. So all these things, you had to be trusted with people where you weren't going to tear up the ministry and try to divide the ministry. And you weren't going to try to do things because God has to trust you that you will keep the people and you will always keep his mission in tact. So um, I also, she said that I could follow directions. So I'm giving you guys keys. Somebody's writing these down as you should be, because you got to be able to follow directions. If you can't follow the directions, you can't go anywhere. The Bible talks about obe disobe delayed obedience is disobedience. I've had to learn to move quickly. They say, come quick, come quick, come quick, come quick, come quick. You saw Papa Lowe, he was like, ah, you're going too slow. You, 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 you're off. Was that person upset? No. If they're over there, are they over there like, you embarrassed me? No. He was right there serving yesterday. They ain't got no problem. Nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. So you can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. So the first thing you have to deal with is your flesh. You have to deal with that part of you that's offended. And, oh, it takes me just so long to get over things. You're never going to make it with the prophets. You can never make it because you'll always be stuck in your old image, your old self. I'm telling you guys <laughs> to raise up in the things of God. I'm telling you the things that make for healthy marriages. I'm telling you things to be able to overlook things. I'm telling you the, the, the secrets that you need. Humility. Humility will raise you up everywhere you need to be. Humility will raise you up exactly where you need to be. And an opportunity will present itself when God knows you've been faithful. An opportunity. Be at home training. I remember when I used to stand in the mirror preaching, you guys. I never preached to one person. I used to preach in the mirror to myself. Amen. You guys, there wasn't nobody to preach to, okay? There was nobody to preach to. <laughs> So I had to preach to myself and I was seeing myself before crowds of people before I had any crowds. All right. I, I remember, I remember just preaching in the mirror. All right. And I remember when God began to elevate, he spoke a word. He said, you're moving. And he moved me to California. He spoke a word. He, they gave me a car. They gave me a signing bonus. He was moving me, but I had to kill my flesh first. Killing my flesh process was I had to pray. So anybody who's truly connected to me, I need you guys to get your faith to faith. I'm going to give you my same steps. If you have haven't ordered it on Amazon. It's under ten dollars. You can get one for one cent. If they, some of them are one cent for used ones, get your faith to faith. I want to give you. I started with my faith to faith. I prayed my devotion every day, and I prayed for thirty minutes. I need you guys who are committed to want to really elevate to make sure you wait. You do it at a set time. That means it's a time when it's not easy can be for you. And it cannot be at the end of your day because we can't put God at the bottom of our day. We have to get up. We have to wake up. We have to put ourselves in a position where it's uncomfortable for us until we can kill our flesh because you can never be fleshly led and be spiritual. You're going to be in the soul realm all the time. Your soul is running you. I, you know how many people I have? How many people you guys know say, I really have good, strong discernment. And no, you really have strong flesh Fleshly, fleshly things, not discernment. They have flesh. They're, they're sensing things from their flesh. They're saying things from their flesh. It's not discernment. They're, they're never, they're not in the spirit. Oh, I see, I see this happening. No, you don't. You see your feelings. Your feelings is what you see. They say, you know, I just don't like her. It's something about her, but they can't tell you what her is. It's something about that prophet. I don't know about him, you know, all that prophesying, yelling, prophesying and stuff. No, just because he doesn't do it like you doesn't mean anything. So 
there's people that have no discernment. And so you have to have discernment. The only way to gain discernment is to kill your flesh. And that way you can know what's God's good, pleasing, acceptable will. Okay. So I'm going to show you how the angel was able to test people. It was the angel that tested people. Your angels will test you before they give you things. Before they can elevate you, you have to be dead to your flesh. You have to be willing to obey God. You have to be willing to serve whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it. You have to be willing to keep the mission. And you can be, at, there's times I was, I've been crying and I still had to, had to serve. There was, I've been wounded by a family member and I still had to get up and, and, and preach. I had, I've been going through a divorce. I'm going to share something with you guys. Literally, there was a time, one time when I did not want to do encounter. It was 2014, you guys. And I was going through, I was going through, I had married that guy that seemed like he was a pastor and he's cast down demons or whatever. And he was not really who he said he was in Christ, you guys. He was, he had, he had stolen somebody else's identity that had the same name as him. The, they both had the same name, but one was a lawyer and one was a liar. And so he took the lawyer's identity and he was made a website and all this stuff. And he was just a fraud, you guys, a fraud, fraud, fraud. In the churches, there are frauds. In the churches, there are people there to distract you. In the churches, there are people to talk about you. They're, in the churches, they're there to to bring confusion just because they're there everything does not mean they're saved just because they're prophesying doesn't mean they're anointed just because they're casting out demons they could be putting demons on you you don't know you have to make this sure you discern and you know this by seeing if they follow order and direction properly otherwise they could not be in the will of god at times so you have to make sure god is showing you that's why i said don't let this anybody lay hands on you don't just let anybody prophesy to you there could be an old prophet that old prophet could just be used at one time, but they're not being used now. So you have to be very careful. So if your friends fall off, you know, I was just looking at Felicia, she had family members that fell off and she had to stay put, family members that got offended. And I'm telling you every year, right after encounter, within 30 days, there's a certain amount of people the devil goes through and he weeds out and pricks off the people who can be pricked off. I'm gonna say it again. I don't know if anybody heard me. If Felicia was on, she you, could tell you. Hey, you every hey, year. Hey, there's a, because there's those that got excited and stopped doing things. There's those who got offended and they it fell off over silly things because it was all fleshly things. Offense is the first thing to prick you off. If you read it in Matthew and Mark, the fourth chapter, somebody can get that for me. And the Amplified, I will read it to you. They're after the word that was spoken over you. They're after your oil. They're after to take something. They're prophets and they used to be connected to this ministry. Now they want to call you. They want to prophesy all the time or, they, or they're, they're out of order. Or they're over at some other place they're prophesying to you and they're not with the mix they haven't been released to do it then you guys got to be careful just because somebody can prophesy i don't want you to be hooked on prophecy i want you to be hooked on where you're supposed to be what god has for you because i don't want you guys to lose anything so watch this i did not want to do this encounter why because i was going through a divorce who preaches when they're going through a divorce remember you're supposed to sit yourself down so i'm trying to sit myself down i'm in vegas and god comes to me in a dream and says do the encounter I cried for three hours on the drive home. I can't, Lord. And he says, I can. I will never forget. He said, I said, God, it's like, um, it was like six weeks away. I haven't even advertised it. I, I haven't promoted it. He is like, I can promote it. I said, I don't have the money. God said, I have the money. Every excuse that I said, I, and I was projecting on me, he said, do it. I said, but God, what do I look like? He's like, you look like you're doing the job I called you to do. If you let your feelings start stopping you, you will never, ever continue to move forward. I'm going to tell you something Papalo taught me three weeks ago. Uh, he said, if you start, stop completing things, all you people that have things you started and didn't finish, he said, spirits love that. He says they love it because when you don't complete things, they will keep giving you that same type of scenario so you quit things and you'll be a quitter. They love making you a quitter. He said demonic spirits love making you a quitter. If you quit one thing and don't finish, he said, just finish even if you know you're not going to do it. He said, just finish. Why? Because if you quit, he says they will continue to send that same thing. They know there's quitting inside of you. Finish what you started. That is so true. Amen. Mm. I was so shocked when he said it. He said, Demon, demons love that. Don't start and stop stuff. He's like, you got to finish. You have to have a finisher's anointing. If you said it, you got to do it. So somebody's turning to Mark, the fourth chapter. Okay. Is this the Amplified Classic or not? Who is this the Amplified Classic? Whoever? Yes? No? No, nope, I need to Amplify. Yes, classic. it's Amplified Classic. 
Oh, classic. Sorry. Uh, come back. Come right back. There we go. Amplified. Got she, it. Oh, she got it. Okay, Sorry. scroll up. For me. Scroll up for me. This is good. This is good. Hold on. Let me put you over there. Let me put you over here so I, I can see. That's okay. You're you're not mute. You're okay. It's all right. Uh, you scroll up. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Now scroll up. Scroll up so I can see. All right, I'm gonna start reading, keep going, because I want I'm gonna scroll up. Okay, it says, give attention to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he came as he was sowing, some seeds fell along paths. One of you guys, you guys are along one of these paths. You guys gotta see this. One of these paths we've all been on at certain times. The birds came and ate it up. Other seeds along the same. Keep going, keep scrolling. I don't want to read this part. I want to give the interpretation. Scroll down, keep going, keep going. Faster, 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 daughter. So faster. Okay, there, go back a little bit. Okay, 14, the sower, four, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, come on. For the sower sows the word. The ones along the path are those who have the word sown. You got a prophetic word from Prophet Lovi. You got a prophetic word from me. You got a prophetic word from somebody mighty who's a real prophet in their hearts. But when they hear it, Satan comes. When you guys, what does it say? at once by force and takes away the message shown to you. You come from an encounter. There is an argument at home. You come from an encounter. Your parents are attacking you. You come from an encounter. They're trying to argue with you on the phone. You come from an encounter. Your boss is attacking you. They're coming at once to try to steal. It's by force. They come to get you offended at something. Prophet Terrence Taryn didn't call me back. Prophet Terrence didn't, didn't do this what I wanted her to do. Whatever. Satan comes at once to take away what? The prophetic word that was spoken over your life. The oil that was given to you. It's seeking for it. It says, in the same way, the ones sown upon stony grounds are those who, when they hear the word, at once receive and accept it. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. I receive. I receive. I receive. I'm going to keep this oil. I got this. They accept it with joy. It says, watch this. Is everybody looking at the 17th chapter? Can everybody see that? It says, and they have no real root. You're still in the flesh. You still easily waver. Papa Lowe talked about yesterday, a person who can't forgive is a baby Christian, a person that takes forever to forgive. And they say, oh, I got proof. And there is a problem. And there's no real problem. You have no real root in yourself. So they endure for a while, for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution comes. Why did it come? It arises on account of the prophetic word, on account of the oil that you carry, on account of what you just did. They come to steal what you have. The devil wants what you carry now. They immediately are what? Offended, immediately offended. See, offense is the snare. Offense is the trap. Offense is what gets you off. The offense is what robs you. Offense is the negative thing. That's why you cannot be offended. So it says, they become displeased. I don't like what she said. I don't like what they did. I don't like what this happened. I don't like that they corrected me. I don't like that they said I can't do deliverance in the bathroom. I don't like that they said that I, can, I shouldn't be giving words all over the place. I don't like this. I don't like this. It says indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. They were supposed to be there, but because they got offended, offense will call you to be displeased. It will cause you to be indignant. It will cause you to be resentful. Now you are in the flesh and you're not submitted and you will stay stumble and you will fall away come amen. on mama you're teaching good mama amen, amen, amen. they didn't recognize me. did you see what they did to me 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 what was i telling god all the things reason why i can't do the encounter me i was centered on my pain my hurt was stopping me i was wanting to quit it says now the ones sown along the thorns that here are the thorns now these are the ones that are the thorns so See, because the other ones are still baby Christians. If you're still an offense, you got to grow. And maybe you know you need to grow. Maybe you're growing up and that's okay as long as you know that the enemy is sending a trap to try, to try to get you to become displeased, resentful, and fall away and quit. Anybody who quits is not at the level they need to be. He said, the ones sown along the thorns are those who hear the word. Now watch this. You heard the word, you accepted it. When the cares, the bills... The anxieties of this world, 
the distractions of this age, the pleasures and delight, watch this, false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the cravings and the passionate desires for other things creep in. I just, I just want to do this. I just want to be with this guy. I just want to be with this girl. I don't care. I'm lonely. I, I, it's still self-centeredness. It's still immaturity. They creep in, they choke and suffocate the word. It becomes fruitless. Now that word that once was being fruitful is now fruitless. So it comes and stolen your oil, fruitless. And it says, these ones sown upon good ground. You got this word. You're tired of failing. You were not offended. You understand submission. You corrected yourself. Yesterday, I had three or four of my spiritual sons say they almost got offended because Rico was correcting them and they had to check themselves. They're in good ground. They said, I'm willing to stay up at night. If prophet says pray for half an hour, I'm committed. I'm dedicated. They're well adapted. See, they can adapt to a change. They can adapt to a leader. They can adapt to what's asked of them. No matter how they feel, they're going to continue to do what they said they were going to do. So they're not feeling led, they are led by the word that they're supposed to do, no matter what it feels like, because your feelings will tell you no, your feelings will tell you you're tired, your feelings will tell you you're hurt, your feelings will tell you no way, your feelings are like you, you cut your flesh and you make it submit to your spirit, and it says the soil, on that, that side of that well-adapted soil, I'm adapting to who? The word of God. I'm adapting to who? God himself. I'm adapting so I can gain and I don't lose. You have to make your flesh submit. You have to tell yourself, shut up. You have to tell yourself offended. Be quiet. You have to begin to do it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So then it says the soil, those soil are the ones who hear the word. You received the word this weekend. You accepted the word. You welcomed it, and you are going to be the ones that will bear fruit. You who remained some 30 times, sown, some 60 times as much, and even 100 times as much. He's, and so this, and he said to this, as the lamp brought in to put under the, they said measure under the bed. Okay, good, good, good. The lampstand. Now it's talking about the lampstand. That's still talking about oil. It, it goes into talking about oil. You're keeping your oil. You're keeping, I said, your oil. Very key. So you guys, there is an attack and it's looking to see immediately. Some of you guys came home to arguments. Some of you guys came home to, to text messages that were strange. It was there to distract you to see, did you really get this? Is it authentic or is it temporary? Are you fleshly? Are you going to be carried away? Are you going to, some of you, the enemy is trying to see, can you argue, is it genuine? Your oil is genuine. Now you have to keep it and give it to no one. Why? The enemy, who's coming? He says, Satan comes at once. Who's he using? Any available person that's weaker than you. <laughs> who's the available person? He would go to them. Now, I'm going to show you something. Uh, Cleo, what's that scripture I gave you yesterday about the angel? I'm going to show you something. Underlay, 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 underlay. Exodus twenty-two twelve. Exodus twenty-two twelve. Genesis. Genesis. Genesis twenty-two twelve. So go to Genesis twenty-two twelve. I'm gonna show you something. Because some of you guys are elevating, and you don't realize. Uh, so I try to at least warn everybody because after years of seeing the same thing, now I'm gonna tell you the uh, before I get to twenty-two twelve. Let me tell you what I did. I cried the whole way because I was trying to look for an excuse not to do the encounter in 2014. God said, you cannot stop. He said, if you stop, they win. If you quit, they win. Guess what too? If you quit, you have to start all the way over instead of just pressing through. Every time you quit, you got to start over. I'm crying for three hours straight. So God hires somebody to put a burner under my butt. My friend, Sarah, she's been my friend for like 25 years. All of a sudden she's like, hey sis, are we doing encounter? I'm gonna come. I'm like, what? She's like, um, so I was I was told her what happened. So you know she called me. I'm gonna be your accountability person. I was like, oh, really? Great. I didn't ask for an accountability person. But yeah. And so you guys, she would be like, okay, so what give me a list, what we got to do. 
I was like, uh, we need shirts. Um, we need flyers. We need the, at this, we need the website. Okay, so she would call me every day. I'm gonna call you every day. <laughs> you guys, sometimes she would call and I wouldn't answer because I hadn't did it yet. So I would have to go do it. And I couldn't hold her off, so I would do it. And then I would call her back once it was done because I'm a person that has to complete what I say. So she was calling me like a bugaboo, you guys. But it, she was hired by God to do it because the next year, she, never since then, she's never been able to make it. It was only that year. She's a singer. She came, she did worship. That was the year Deborah Manns came. She rocked it. Do you know in the midst of that encounter, I was delivered. In the midst of that encounter, I was set free. In the midst of that encounter, I got words I needed. In the words of that midst of that encounter, uh, and then all these people came. I don't know where they came from, you guys. They came from everywhere. And God said, he was like, he needed me to not quit. He, he put, gave me help. So when I wanted to quit, why did I want to quit? Because I was going through a divorce. Because I was embarrassed. Because I was shameful. Because I felt like I didn't have the money. Because I felt like I didn't have the time. Because I didn't know how to gather the people at the time. Because I was in my feelings of my circumstance. I was letting my circumstance determine my future instead of my calling and my word that God spoke over me push me through. That was when I learned I can't let my circumstance cause me to elude from my purpose and my calling, from what God called me to do. I'm responsible to do regardless of if I'm going through mess. It's like King, King, it's like King David saying, oh, I can't rule and be king right now because I committed adultery. It's like, no, you're going to rule because you, anyway, you're going to get up there. And, and so what you embarrassed? So what your son slept with your, your concubines on the roof where everybody can see? You know you did it. Now you're going to get up here and you're going to push through. You're still going to be king. You're still going to go through. So what, how you look? It doesn't matter how you look. Get over how you look. Just do what I say. I was like, okay. That year empowered me, you guys. That weekend, it delivered me, you guys. That weekend, I got set free. It's God said, if you can only serve when you feel good, it's you. It's not me. I'm going to say it again. If Amen. you can only do it when you feel good, it's not God. It's you. Amen. 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 The prophesied Amen. while Amen. I was, my heart was ripped out. I've had to prophesy when, 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 and, and pray for people healing when I needed healing. I've had to stay when people closest to me would turn their back or have a misunderstanding or something strange. I'm like, you should know me. Wait a minute. And I had to stay when God said, don't defend yourself. I had to stay when God said, don't explain yourself. I had to stay. I had to stay put. I had to stay going. And there was times I was saying, I'm going through this again, God. This cannot be again. I'm like, why? How? And God was like, it's okay. Get up and keep moving forward. Get up and keep moving forward. Get back in purpose. Get back in purpose. And I had to be tested to see would I serve God regardless of anything that happens to me? Would I stay in my calling? Would I stay in my purpose? Would you stay where God calls you to be regardless of what they try to do to you, regardless of what they try to say about you, regardless of anything? Will you continue to go forth because you love God and he asked you to? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how to do half the stuff. <laughs> that I do. I didn't know how to do 501c3s, figured it out. I didn't know how to do a trademarks, figured it out. You guys, you know, last night I got to see Calvin. Calvin helped us produce the CD with Josh and those guys. And Calvin came to me and said, you did something that takes people a year and a half to do in such a matter short of time. He said, you didn't even know what you were doing and you figured it out. He said, you helped me. You pushed me where I was complacent, where I was this. You made me so much better. I was like, I did, you know, because I had this thing that if I say I'm going to do it, I need it done, done on time. I'll call you. I'll be like, you guys, come on, finish, 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 finish. I don't care. And my girls, I have a bunch of girls in the ministry. They'll just figure it out. I was like, you guys, we need to figure this out. We don't know what we're doing, but in internet, the internet age, I figured you could figure this thing out. I don't care what you want to do. You can go on the internet and figure out how. You can figure out how to do anything you want to do these days. I don't care what it is. You got crazy kids building bombs because they went on the internet to figure out how to build a bomb. And they went to Home Depot and got everything they wanted to do and built a bomb and killed everybody. You don't tell me you can't figure out how to do something. You can figure it out. You can do with it. You have to stick with it. You have to kill your flesh. You have to be committed. You have to be dedicated. You have to be willing and the spirit of God will guide you into something you never did before. Amen. 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 No, I'm just willing. 
I'm just willing. I'll try anything, you guys. I will do it for your sake. If you guys say, you know, I got this going on. I don't know how to do it. I go to God. I say, I'll be like, God, you know, uh, Keisha, Keisha has this issue. And Father, I need to know wisdom on knowing what to do. And I will sit there before God and I will start asking and I'll start reading stuff just to figure out. And then God will give me the answer. And it works. God will do something strange like, I want you to take this uh, water and get a grain of uh, sugar and put the sugar. I'll be like, I'm doing what? <laughs> just do what he says. <laughs> it works. It'll be some strange stuff. I just love it. But it works. I learned Amen. to just figure it out. I don't know. I, I mean, people I say, I don't know how to be a husband. I'm like, guess what? God going to do it with you. Nobody knew how to be a husband. I don't know how to be a father. I had, nobody knew how to be a father. Everybody gets the same test. Nobody knew. And nobody knew. I don't know how, how to make it back if I cheated and how do I come back and, and fix this. Guess what? There is a way because men do it all the time. Women do it all the time. I don't know what how to recover from this. There's always a comeback. And if it's not, you the story creator and you about to write a book about it and everybody's going to come and you're going to get paid for the pain you went through because you're about to tell them you're the way pay pay way paper you are the the one who's writing the book you are the Man. one who's creating the story you are the one with the testimony you are the one that they need so next time when they looking for somebody they go to the internet and my name pull up because i got the answers they need because i went through so much whatever you're the answer yeah. some of you yeah. haven't seen a situation like yours because you are what the world needs and god's just grooming you to be able to tell your story how you got your heart to beat and you couldn't feel before how you got ability to to rise up and no jobs were coming to you and you got jobs how you got depression off of you how you got delivered you know hillary can go tell somebody you know what hey man i could i i got delivered for something like that too Amen. And she'd be able to, they say, Amen. what? They'd be like, no, no, no. My parents did the same thing my family gave me. And I'll tell you what, I can tell you God in order to free you. How? Because I got free. Because I got delivered. Because I got delivered from pornography. Because I got delivered from procrastination. Because I got delivered from lies. Because I got delivered from whatever. You are the deliverance. You are the person. You're the person that became stable. Because God did it for you. And you know you were ratchet. Now you're righteous. You can tell somebody how. They see you later, but they didn't know your story. So your story is what they need. But you got to get through to the other side and you got to get that flesh to die first so you can raise Amen. up. And if you quit Amen. the process, because I'm going to tell you what happens during this time. The people who are going to be the vultures will be the ones you least expect. Amen. True. The people who are the vultures will be the ones you least expect. So it'll be, it, it, it'll come through, like I said, like a pastor or come through another prophet or come through something else that'll come to try to prick you off and you'll give a trust because they have a title. Uh uh. <laughs> That's why I say, I'm gonna tell you guys what, how, how it tries to come. It'll come through a wife, it'll come through a child, it'll come through something else to try to get you into something fleshly or try to get something in your ear. Papa said this time, he said, tell your spiritual kids. I'm gonna tell you. He gave me something last night, you guys. And I, in my full meeting, I'll just close it. He gave me something last night. He said, hey, a bunch of the people that you think, especially some of the spiritual kids I raised up, he said, they can prophesy, but they say they're prophets because they can prophesy, but they're not prophets. You could ask, Tara Monique was there. She could tell you. He said, they say they're prophets because they can prophesy an accurate word. He said, any one of you can prophesy an accurate word if you just learn. He said, it doesn't mean they're a prophet. The prophetic office, he said, like Elisha. He said, I'm about to take you into the Elisha office. Amen. I'm like, Jesus. Amen. He said, Amen. He said, Amen. He said Nobody gets here without somebody who's an Elijah brings you in, which meant you had to be submitted, dedicated. That's why I said, you guys, don't just take a prophetic word from anybody right now. Just be careful and cautious. If you really, really, really know them, I'm not talking about somebody. And, and, and people, I'm going to tell you this. People who used to be connected to the ministry will call you and be like, hey, I got a word. In this season, you guys can do what you want, but I'm just giving you guys wisdom. You can't, I'm not, I'm going to give you wisdom. You can do what you want, but... I'm telling you, be cautious. If they weren't up there in the midst of us with, and called by us, 
then be careful in this season. Okay, I'm just giving you one because Papa began to say, he said, they'll think that they're prophets because they can prophesy. And they'll say things like, if I be a prophet, but that doesn't mean you're a prophet. If you haven't been submitted to a prophet, I've been submitted to Prophet Lovi for three plus years. And he went through a lot of testing in my character, in my ability. He has watched me from a distance. He has, I mean, there's four or five months went by. I didn't even hear from him. And he was still on the same. God said, keep doing what I got you doing. This is not, and I was like, amen. He said, I'm taking you into this place. Nobody gets here unless somebody like an Elijah brings you in. And he said, don't you wonder why there was the sons of prophets? The sons of prophets weren't yet real in the office of prophets. That's why they couldn't go where Elijah went. Elijah stuck to him like glue. Elijah was not offended. Elijah remained no matter when he tried to shake him, he couldn't shake Elisha because Elisha knew I'm called to you. I'm not going nowhere. Amen. Faithful, he was loyal, he was committed, he was dedicated. And so last night, I didn't know it was my night, you guys. It had nothing to do with encounter and nothing to do with anything else, but the heart and loyalty and years of a time and the purpose that's on my life. And you guys have to do with this. And so for in order for me to give you the next level things, which are spiritual things, I had to be brought in by another person. I had to be given some things. Amen. 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 Papa gave me one of the things I can tell you guys on the line. He said his angels. Now he gave me some of his angels to work with me. Wow. So, wow. Now he said this. I'm going to help you. He Amen. said, he said to tell my spiritual kids. It, it, now he said, I'm trying to tell you something. He said, he said, I'm going to tell you real quickly. It's a good thing I'm not easily offended, you guys. God only gives certain gifts to people who aren't hot-headed. So, you know, some of you guys be killing everybody if you could. Everybody that's a prophet cannot curse somebody. Everybody that's a prophet, you can bless, but they can't curse. Okay? So, as you know, they'd be like, you did me wrong. You're cursed. You did me wrong. Blah, 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 blah. People do me wrong for years. It don't matter. I just know some of them are just immature. That You have to know which ones are immature by the conversations they carry, by their actions. You can see who's immature, but if you're immature and they're immature, it's the blind leading the blind. You have to know what maturity looks like in the spirit realm. So literally, um, some people just haven't grown up yet. You just got to give them time. If you're truly a man or woman of God, when they do wrong, you just pray for them and keep it moving. You don't even think about it. I'm really, if you really ask my spirit. Amen. I don't really think about those things. I don't really, if they do something crazy and you guys be more offended than I do, I just be like, hey, move on and I'm good with it. I'm like, do you know how many times people would do crazy things? It's like your kid. Your kid gets mad at you, they cuss you out. Are they still not your kid anymore? You just let them grow up. Now you ain't gonna be in my house cussing me out. So you might've got kicked out, but that don't mean I don't love you, okay? <laughs> no parent gonna let their Amen. child cuss them out, go crazy. You might even get slapped upside the face and then their kids be like, you slap me yeah he was cussing shut up you don't cuss in my house i don't know who you think you are get out this house and then <laughs> one of my kids one time got some I real real smart with the prophet i was like get out now i was like it's one and i don't care if it's one in the morning you got to go <laughs> i threw the backpack out there too here you can't even go out the front door you going out the garage you ain't walking through my house <laughs> and i meant it and i went to sleep <laughs> You know, but my kids have enough common sense to know to come back humbly and repent. You come back arrogant, you're going to go right back out that door. You come back humbly, we good. Like this prodigal son, yeah. the father didn't chase a, a rebellious child. I'm not chasing no rebellious spiritual kids that don't know their place yet. Why would I look like the, the, the prodigal son stayed in his place? And if they're really your children, they will come back humbly in their right mind and confess and be trying to do right. They don't go back to, trying to curse the parents and acting crazy. No, 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 no. The father was still an authority. He still had enough. Even though he gave you his 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 stuff to go squander, he knew you were going to squander. He already know because he already knows he's a man and he knew 
knew in authority that you were going to lose everything. So a, a spiritual parent can see where a child gonna go. We see the rebellion, you let them go. Nobody's cursing them. When the father saw him come back, the father put ran after him and was so happy and put his, his arms around him and hugged him. If you truly are a spiritual parent, when they come back, you just accept them. This year, I've had more people apologize for stuff. I didn't even know they were mad. They were like, I blocked you because of this. And I'd be like, you did? <laughs> I don't know who blocks me. I don't know who deletes me because I am not looking. So I'd be like, you did? I'm like, I didn't even notice. <laughs> you were mad about something. The devil had you mad all by yourself. And I didn't even notice that you blocked me. I didn't know that you you deleted me. Now they come back talking about, can you please accept my friend request? I'm so sorry. I'd be like, what? I didn't even know. <laughs> it's funny to me. I'd be like, okay. So in the process, you don't, you know, if I was upset about silly things they do, I've been and tried to kill, I would try to kill them in the spirit. You don't have a spiritual parent that's trying to kill you in the spirit. So thank God. So God can't give that gift that he gave me last night to everybody because some, some people will misuse the gift. <coughs> Excuse me. They will misuse the gift and they will be trying to harm people every time they don't do what they want them to do. You got to let people evolve. You got to let them grow. I mean, every kid goes through a little 20 year old cray cray phase when they're 20 and 30 years old, they think they know everything and they don't. You got to just let them grow up, you know? So you have to have understanding. I'm about to get to it. So I'm going to show you where the angel tested Abraham. You're going to go through testing because you have to know who you are and God can elevate you when you pass these tests. And so for me, he said this, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to tell you why he said it. I said all that for a reason. I just said, you guys, first of all, I said, tell the spiritual kids, be careful who they listen to and let text and talk to about, talk about me. This is what he said to tell you. This came from Papa. If somebody wants to text you or prophesy something or say, hey, there's something going to happen to the ministry or this, any other, rebuke it quickly because they're seeing if you're the weak link. It could come to a friend. He said, it'll come. They want to see if you'll just listen to it. Because God doesn't just show a doom to a ministry. He'll go and try to tell you to pray. And, and God's always a repentant God. He's not going to tell you something. He said, be careful about people coming and talk to you, talking to you. And he said, they think you're a weak link. Cut it off immediately. Nobody comes to me talking crazy about Papa Lowe. They know that's a shutdown. I'm not joking. I will never play about that. I will never play about that. We ain't having this conversation at all. So um, shut it down. Why? And do not tell me from this moment on, he said. If you tell me from this moment on, he said, my, the angels that are with me, not only will they fight them, somebody could die if it comes to, if it really hurt me. So don't tell me, just shut it down yourself. If you're my true spiritual children, you will shut it down yourself. And he says, I've given you something. He said, I'm telling you, when you are a friend of God, God will defend his friends. People say, oh, where's the same? Well, there was Miriam, there was, Je there, was, there was Aaron, and there was Moses. And God heard them talking about him. And he sure put leprosy himself on Miriam. And Miriam says, are we not all prophets? We're all prophets. I'm a prophet too. But there's a prophet God will defend and there's some he won't. You guys know the story, right? Or we do we need to read it? So there Amen. is a difference. Amen. So because where God has, your guys' lives are so important, we don't have time for foolishness. Your guys' lives are so important that we have to get the oil to you. We got to get you guys to deliver deliverance. We got to get you guys to prophetic. If someone is, a, they, if their attacks are to stop the progress of you. If they're not here, it's for a reason. If they were here and they didn't leave a good way and you didn't announce them and say, you know, so-and-so, Josh is, is going to be starting his church and we're going to bless him and support him. And he is going to be exiting. He's going to be leaving the ministry, but we love him and we are a part of him. Matter of fact, we write him a $15,000 check to support his cause here, Josh, because Josh is asked to really need to release him to go into ministry. That's how you leave. You just ask. I feel like I'm called to be released. And it's so awesome. You don't go in a manner where everything's kind of strange. And now you're calling people in the ministry up and you want them to meet up and all this stuff. God won't do that, you guys. You have to know there's orders to some things, okay? So I'm telling you guys, if somebody wants to do something crazy, <laughs> just, just pray for them. Don't tell me, because he said from this day forth, he said, not only, he said, when you bless, you will be able to curse. Now I was like, whoa. He said, the angels that work with 
protect you. They will begin to fight fiercely for all of you guys. They will fight for you guys. They will, there's, he said those deliverance angels that came in there, he said he summoned them there. He said those same angels he gave me now, he said, watch when you preach, watch when you get together, watch how things begin to manifest, watch how things begin to happen because God's going to allow things to happen so quickly because you guys matter and you're about the souls. You guys have to get to where you need to get to. You have to be elevated. You have to have the prophetic go for it. You guys have to be ignited. So the enemy is not really truly after me. He will distract you so that he can make sure that he doesn't get you to where you need to be. And you will be in, he wants you to be pricked off now before you get rooted and grounded, before you get real strong, before Erica and Derek get into that marriage ministry, before Roslyn gets into the ministry she needs to be into, before you guys get planted and rooted and strong. He wants to get you now in a place before you can get anointed to be in a prophetic office and not just be able to prophesy and call names and numbers. Amen. We receive. Amen. 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 So you will see a change and a shift. You guys will see so many mighty things begin to happen because God has to elevate it and raise us up to the place so you guys can be where you need to be. So let's look at this in Genesis real quickly. Genesis, what did you say it was? Uh, uh, okay, somebody got it. Genesis, what is it? 22 and? 12, 22, 12. Scroll 22, 12. down. To, go up to 10 real quick. Okay. Mm. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He answered, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God and reverence him since you have not held back from me. Oh, let me see. What translation is this? Let me see this translation real quick. Translation. It's missing a very important part. Go to the uh, King James Version. I want you guys to see this. It's so important. King James. Okay. Okay. Now go back over there. He told him to take your only son, that only son. And he said to make an offering to him. Now here. All right. And Abraham. Um, okay. Uh, go. Okay. Now that's from verse. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. Who called to him, you guys? The angel, the angel, the angel, angel. Lord. Okay. And he said, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, lay not thine hand upon the lot. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Who knows? The angel. The angel. The angel. So I thought it was God that was testing him. Mm. Angel. Who, who was doing it? Who's doing it? The angel it? was testing. Whoa. The angel. The angel. So it says, the angel of the Lord called out to him out of the heaven and said, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. So the angel wanted to see, do you have fear of the Lord? <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Is this thee that thou has withheld thy son that have not have not withheld? What is God after? He's trying to see: Will you withhold anything from me that is good? Do you withhold the one thing that you want, that thing that you want the most? So, so Abraham lifted up his eyes. He looked, and behold, him was a ram caught in a thicket by the thorns. And Abraham went up and took the ram, and 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 an offering offered up a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, it said, for the Lord shall provide, for the Lord had also shall see. The angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven a second time. 
and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord from the uh, Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, that in blessing I will bless thee. Now the angel is telling him the reward for his, his act within his heart. He says, I will bless thee and I will multiply thee and thy seed as stars as the heavens and as the sand as stars as the seashore. Okay, and in thy seed shall all the nations of earth be blessed. So Abraham returned unto his young men and they rose up and they went together to Bathsheba. So realistically, real quickly, you guys, who, why was the angel testing him? This test to this, you got to pass the test. You got to finish. You got to kill the flesh. You got, if I say, if your prophet says, hey, 30 minutes a day, do everything within your power, set it in your phone. Make it a time. Kill your flesh. You have to be willing to do it because the angels are watching to see if you'll do it. Your elevation is in the instruction. Your elevation is in will you do what you're supposed to do so that you can rise up to where you're supposed to rise up. And so this will help you to get to the place in God where you're supposed to be. Amen. God will raise you up. And so, but he has to know, will you not withhold your things from me? Will you be obedient? Will you do as I say for obedience is better than sacrifice? Amen. That's, that's really deep. Turn, turn to where it says, uh, uh, let's see. I want to see where it talked about Moses and Miriam and Aaron, because they're all three prophets. They're brothers and sisters. They're, they're three prophets. Hold on. I'm looking for it. So there's Joseph I'm not going that far. Joseph. Jacob, I'm not in Jacob, hold on. Um, Isaac, Rebecca. Oh, no. Moses. There we go. Has anybody found it yet in your Google? Where he, where he put leprosy on, on Miriam. Is it Numbers 12? Uh, maybe. No, I don't know. Let's see. I thought it was an Exodus. Numbers 12, 6. Okay, turn there real quick. Turn there quickly and then just go ahead, go ahead, let's read it. I want to show you because these are the things that are so important. Because the enemy will remember that what's the number one thing you need to be on guard of is offense. If I don't tell you guys these things, how can you keep your oil? If I don't tell you guys these things, how can you grow to the next level? If I don't tell you the humility, the flexibility, the ability to obey the feeling to not quit the things about giving and sowing and committing your ties or going that has to be settled in heaven the thing about about uh about about guarding and protecting even those who god gave you and, and and making sure you don't listen to any mess making sure you're not involved with any conversation making sure that you remain in in the position this will keep your oil so that your oil continues to burn because some of them their lamp has gone out they look like they're a virgin they look like they're a prophet they look like they're an apostle. They look like they're an evangelist. They look like they are, but they're not in the position that they're supposed to be. And so the, the, the oil has gone out. Now they need your oil. How many of you guys saw that, that, that skit they did? It hurt. It, how whoa, many of you guys whoa, felt that? I was like, just like, I was just saying that same thing. Like, whoa. I was like, oh, amazing. Yo. So there was five versions there were five wise and 10 versions, but there was five wise and there was five foolish. And so, you know, it's, it, they all look the same until it's time for the oil. And so everybody doesn't have oil. Everybody, oil is the pain that you suffered and went through. Oil is the things that you withstood from, the conversations you didn't get in. Oil is you being able to pray and get up and pray. Oil is your, all the seed that you sown. Oil is your commitment, your dedication. The oil is so amazing because you were able to elevate and to grow. And you were not just uh, doing the works of God. You were, you were literally in Christ. Because the Bible says that many shall say to me on that day, did I not prophesy in thy name? Did I not do many wonderful works? Did I not, did I not do these things? He said, I will de say, depart from me. I never knew you. How did God never know you when you were prophesying? I'm trying to tell you, don't get hooked up on the, uh, the gifts. Get hooked up on the character. You will see the character. You have to see the character and know the person to keep your oil. They gonna want your oil. Remember, Amen. you saw you saw the, the dance ministers. They were showing. They said, "Give us some of your oil." They said like this. They said, "Uh uh." They was like, "No, you get your own oil." No, you have to protect what God put in you. 
they and they don't come just straight at you like, hey, uh, uh, let me get some of that. You have to discern that something tricky is coming. So that's why I said, uh, usually right after an encounter, a major encounter with God, the devil is coming on account of the word. He's coming to steal the word from you. He's coming to steal your deliverance. He's coming to steal what God gave you. He's coming to steal these things he wants what god gave you because he doesn't have it you carry something that's authentic you carry something that's mighty you carry something that's real you carry something that they want now they recognize they didn't get it how come they didn't remain 20 hours in the presence of god they didn't remain in the position they didn't remain in the and 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 stay connected. You guys stayed for the miracles. You guys stayed for the signs. You guys stayed and cleaned after. You stayed there hours before. You guys were serving. You guys were praying. You guys prayed each prayer. You didn't just come. Well, I'm just coming for one service. I'm just coming for the one miracle service. And I'm not. We started off at nine o'clock in the morning with miracles, signs, wonders. You guys stayed online the whole time. We started off. We stayed there. We sow. We practiced. We were ready. We were committed. We had to check our flesh in a lot of areas. Everybody, it's challenging working with a, a group of 40 and 50 people that have different ideas and different minds, and different hearts. You stay connected. You had to humble yourself. You had to press. Nobody, everybody was there and everybody was seen. With the, but, but you got to watch the miracle signs and wonders. But there was some of you guys, you guys are privileged because your position to be able to be in the midst. You guys saw things this weekend people will never see. You guys witnessed things. Things that people would not even believe. I'm telling you, how many of you guys know you can't just go tell everybody everything you saw this weekend? You can't Amen. go. Amen. 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 If they didn't buy their tickets to be there, then absolutely. I Amen. They don't understand what you just saw. They don't understand. Even the passion, people seen praise dances, but you guys ain't seen praise dancing like that. <laughs> it's like the level was on like a 10 times 10. It was like literally the fire, the prophetic in the room, in the room. How does, how can he prophesy to things that nobody even knew? I mean, it was so many deep things that were going on there. God was moving by his spirit. You don't think that enemy was mad. And so he's trying to figure out who can I seek? Who can I go? Who can I go after? And somebody, I got about 20 messages. Mama T, I got home and this happened. Mama T, I got, why? He was after the word. He was after the word. I said, some of you guys got the answers and Mickey, ways workshop some of you guys got it in in prophet low papa low told me you guys he said go and sin no more go and love the lord go and press into jesus he was giving you the answer is to press into the things of god to keep your stuff what you gain don't let these and now don't let this go down don't go home and just let the fire down out like that was just a great weekend no i need to experience having an encounter this weekend i need to have another encounter with god i need to do something else mighty i need to do something else anointed you need to be able to prophesy to somebody on this line i got 80 people on instagram right now it's like i can pull up somebody and prophetically speak to them i don't know them and god will tell them and bring them out from where they're at and god can choose any one of you guys and he's been doing it all weekend all weekend you guys saw at the very end i'm trying to tell you do you i want to do everything i have to do no when god said touch the feet touch the feet i was like no god not I was like, okay, I'll, this would be quick. I don't know how that line kept growing because God knew there's a few things hiding here and they not leaving here bound. I, if you are a true prophet, your life should profit. If you are a true prophet, if you are a true prophet, then you should be able to take people from height to height. You should be able to elevate them and bring them where they need to be. That's why God is giving you oil that shall remain. That's why I said, you guys get into John, start reading John, just keep reading, just pray, read, pray, read, pray, read. I'm teaching you because I'm taking you to a place where you're going to begin to your gifts in about six weeks many of you guys your gifts are going to burst forth something's going to well up inside of you you guys are going to move to a place you've never been before you guys are going to begin to have dreams and visions like you never had Amen. before if you can just Amen, I you Amen, when they want to come receive. to argue Amen. you don't have time for arguments you know if, you was, like, if they want to come and accuse you or something Amen, you just say you know you don't have time to talk about that you can't take everybody's phone call right now you can't take everybody's uh, conversation right now you don't have time to listen to things that you used to listen to this is your time in your season where god is about to elevate you like never before amen i receive hillary's not receiving to keep that in amen i receive 
If Hillary's like, okay, I'm free, and she just goes home and sits there and not fill herself with the word and prayer time, the enemy's looking, and it tells you, and we're going to read two scriptures. We're going to read the one about Miriam and them and, and Aaron, and I want us to read about the demon that leaves you and says, I'll go back to my house, and he wants to bring some seven times stronger, and he wants to bring, he said, something worse will happen to you. Last night, Prophet Lobi deleted that message immediately soon. If you guys missed it, he deleted it immediately. It was gone. He, he said, but the, the key of it was, is something worse could come upon you because you go back to your old stuff because you, you will, would not stop that old stuff that used to do. And so you, God freed you and they're looking to come back. So let's read this one scripture. And then I want us to go to the one that shows you how the enemy will come and he will seek you, come back, try to come back. And he tries to claim you as his own and bring seven more stronger demons than you had before. The devil is a lie. That's why I said, you guys, don't let him prick you off. You guys, don't be quick to let people just grab, oh, oh I got a prophetic word. I want to do this. I want to do that. No, 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 no. Wait, just give a moment. Let, let, that, let that word get in you. Meditate on it. Think on it, pray on it, stay be in the presence of God. You don't have time to answer everybody's call right now. You don't have time to listen to anybody and everybody, especially if they were not in the midst of you getting what you got this weekend. If they weren't up there in the front participating, don't be fooled by the enemy. So let's read that real quick. Let's go to that scripture. Um, if you, and then the second scripture I'm going to need is the one about the enemy leaving you, the Satan, Satan leaves and, and we cast the demons out and they want to come back because they will try to come back seven times stronger. Okay. So where are we at? We are in numbers, the 12th chapter. What, what, um, uh, it says here. Okay. Um, nope. You got to go back the other way. Go down a little bit. Go back up to eight. Okay. Okay. It said my servant Moses. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. Go back further, further, down, 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 further, down, 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 down. Let's go a little faster. Come on. All right. So let's we'll start at one. And Miriam and Aaron, uh, Aaron, I'm in Numbers, the 12th chapter, spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman he had married, or he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, hath the Lord indeed spoken only to Moses? And he says, or has he not also spoken to us? What they're saying is, aren't we all prophets? You know, Moses is a prophet, but we're all prophets. All prophets are not the same, you guys. I want to get that through your mind. And like Prophet Lobi said last night, he said, you were here until last night even. He said, I elevated you here now. And you're in the office of a prophet now. The office is now, he said, I've been inducted, I've been initiated in. So it's a different level of being this prophet. And he says here, he said, are we not all prophets? Now the man, Moses, was very meek above the men which were on the face of the earth. And the Lord spoke suddenly unto Moses and to Aaron and Miriam, come out here unto the tabernacle and at the congregation. And they came out, okay? And it says, and the Lord Lord came in a pillar of the cloud and stood at the door of the tabernacle. First of all, the Lord heard their conversation. So every conversation God is hearing. All right. That's why I don't talk about prophets. I don't care what they did. I don't care if they committed adultery. I don't care what they did. I have grace and mercy. That's I am not. That is another man's servant. I'm not getting in that conversation about that prophet. So it says the Lord came in the pillar of the cloud. He stood in the door of the tabernacle, called them. Then he says, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, mm, I feel the angels, angels of the Lord. And the Lord will make, make myself known unto him in a vision and speak into him into a dream. But Moses, my servant, is not so, who is faithful of all my house. He, because uh, you're faithful in ministry, look at the people that talk to you. Look at what they govern. Look at the ministry that they bring. God is trying to say, look, he's faithful with all my house. He's faithful with these souls. He's faithful with Cleo. He's faithful with Alina. He's faithful with Georgia. He's faithful with, 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 with Keisha. He's faithful with Yvonne. He's faithful with, with, with Cynthia. He's faithful with Adora. He's faithful with Eunice. He's faithful with Rima. He's faithful with Tish. He's faithful with Tara Monique. He's faithful with L. He's faithful with Larry. He's faithful. He's faithful with Josh. You know, he's saying here, he's faithful with all my house. He said here, with him, I speak mouth to mouth. I don't talk to him like I talk to you guys. I talk to you guys in riddles. I talk to him directly. I visit him. Apparently, it says, it says, uh, 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 and not in dark speeches. And it says, also, he made a distinction. Whoever, he, said, he says, why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? 
And the anger of the Lord kindled against them and he departed. So it says here, he didn't just depart. It says here, and Aaron looked up uh, upon Miriam and behold, she was leprous. And then guess what? This is why God picked Moses. Moses prayed for him. Also, Job's friends talked about about uh, about him god was angry at the friends and his anger kindled to where they had to bring an offering and if he accepted their offering god will forgive him he made it where only the man can forgive their sin god has to only give these gifts to somebody who has a pure heart who doesn't want to see you guys destroyed that means Amen. you can't be in the flesh it means you have to be in the spirit. let's look at the next one real quickly let me get this uh charger real quick from this other phone so instagram doesn't go out Wonder. Okay, so what? Get to grab the other scripture, and we'll be done here in a second. I'm Matthew gonna... twelve forty three. So Matthew twelve forty three. Let's read it. God is helping you guys so much because I saw the enemy send traps to some of a few of you guys to try to pull you, and God is beginning to give you um is beginning to give you uh, the answer so that you can be remained, so that nothing can prick you off, so that it wouldn't be caught suddenly. You have a choice to make. God will let you make a choice at least. It won't be sneaking up on you. Amen. So watch this. All right, Matthew, it said, you said, what is it? 1243. 1240. Okay. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. When he saith, I will return unto my house. What did he call it? My house. My house. From whence Jesus. I came and whence he come. See, so the demon calls your his house your house. I was casting out that demon the other day when we were in um, and the ancestral demon. And the demon said, they gave her to me. Last night, I learned something that can make that whole process a lot quicker. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for last night. <laughs> amen, amen. I learned something that could have cut that whole scenario in half. Thank God amen. I was able to command the angels. Thank God I wasn't chasing. Thank God I knew how to do those things. Um, amen. That takes years of experience, okay? That takes years, 20 years of experience of knowing, but now... Things will happen quicker, faster. I will be able to discern and I have mightier angels working with me. But he says here, that spirit was claiming that she belonged to him. Those spirits are claiming that you belong to them. The devil is a lie. You have to begin to keep your house swept clean. It says, I will return unto my house from whence I came. And when he came, he find it is empty. What is empty? Guess what he didn't do? He didn't heed to this warning we're talking about right now. He did not heed to what God said. He didn't get in his word. He didn't press in. He didn't begin to fast. He didn't begin to seek the Lord at a deeper level. He just let it die. You went home and you let it die. You let your experience just go. So it says that it was empty. It wasn't filled with the word of God. You have to fill the house with the word of God. It says here, I will return unto my house from whence I came. And when he came, he findeth empty. He says, swept and garnished. If some of my guys could please post in our Instagrams and different things, I don't see us. We didn't post this morning. And so I need uh, Desiree. I need uh, Mel. I need you guys to post because I I'm, um, I need you guys to post the information, please. So when it says here, I will, I will return it to my house, which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and garnished. Then goes he, he takes with him seven other spirits. Why? Because you already defeated him. He was defeated already once. So you have the ability to defeat that one guy. He has to go and get something stronger than what he had before. He has to go and get a spirit that is stronger seven times so that now you will not have a harder time getting free. So he goes, if you go back into something God delivered you from, if you get lazy, if you do these things, it'll be hard for harder for you to get free. They know that. So he can't go by himself because he's already defeated. So he has to go bring something stronger. And it says here, he says, I will take with myself seven other spirits more wicked than myself, then enter him and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto his wicked generation. And so they will be able to be, you'll be worse. 
Also, it says too, when when you've been healed and he says, go and sin no more. It's saying he's saying that so that you can keep your healing because something worse will come upon you if you go back into something. God today is going to seal you. You will not go back into some of the things you came out of. That complacency, yeah. that that that, yeah. that ability to not, not, to not um, that, mm-hmm. that tiredness, that, that fleshliness yeah. in the name of Jesus. Let me see, where are my guys? I'm going to need, where, where's Melanie? or uh, Mahogany or Skylar. I'm gonna need somebody to post in Facebook because they have not yet and neither have they in Instagram. I think there might be something wrong with Instagram because I haven't seen any of their things move. But um, I need you guys to post post for the people because they don't have that. Thank you, Melanie. You guys, I don't want to tell you guys, you guys have to do it. Matter of fact, some of you guys other will earn yourself a job. If my people don't do it and you do it for them, then you guys already, I used to do it all the time for Papalo. I would just go in and post it myself. We shouldn't have to tell any of my guys at this time. They should just already know to post it and if they don't know then you guys post it for them okay so they, uh, also let me see so if they don't do it you guys do it because then i have to come in and i have to do it i have to say something in it and it and disrupts that's the way you guys get your job because somebody will recognize that you're doing it and 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 then that's how you begin to be noticed things like that so whenever you guys see somebody's not doing something you guys just begin to do it when you know how it's supposed to be like rico did just step up and you just do it you just check okay so that creates opportunity as us working as one amen Amen. Oh, it works. So with all that said, you guys, um, you have to understand, um, why does he say, go and sin no more? So he said, or something worse will come upon you. Something worse is looking for an opportunity to come on you when you have been delivered. It's looking for you to be complacent, lazy, tired, get, in, get connected with the wrong person. Was it King David's son? Look, they looked for the one child that could betray his father, Absalom. They look for somebody who could betray the father. They were looking to see who could it be. They're looking. They found one of his sons that they could corrupt. A pitiful. He came and he confused the case that he was bringing not wise counsel because his son would listen to it. They got into his ear. You have to be not that ear that can be pricked off easily. Because they will come between your husband and wife. They will come between division, different things. You know, it's so crazy because sometimes somebody can overhear a conversation and work for your good. One of my sons said yesterday, he said his wife was overhearing a conversation we had. She wanted to know what happened, what happened, what happened? And I thought, how awesome is that? That, you know, how often do you hear people that are for your marriage, that are for your situation, they're for you, and they want to know what is this over here that they are for the betterment of us? You know, they need to know the heart Amen. of what God has. They need to know the heart that you carry. I don't want you guys losing anything. I don't want you guys having seven more stronger demons. I don't want you to be the weaker link that they go after. So I'm just helping you today because I, uh, Tara Monique was going to teach on Battlefield of the Mind. And, and after what Papa did, he said, you know what? You got to help him. I said, I was like, let me come on. I want to help you. Because some of you walked right into things that didn't know why it was being said. You have to learn everything that you take home, everything you were learned. Now apply it to your life. Amen. Amen. You have to apply it. You have to do it. You have to be the one. Uh, you have to be the one who, who they see and they have to know you're changed and you're delivered. Oh, there, finally. Okay. I couldn't see any of those Instagram comments. They was doing something weird. So I'm telling you guys this because God wants you to remain. I'm telling you this because God wants you to pass your test. I'm telling you this because you see Christians for 30 years at the same place. They haven't moved in. in. This is not you. We're elevating. We're growing. We are, we are in finances and relationship. In, in dreams and visions and prophecy, interpretation and interpretation of tongues and the teaching you guys are growing in. I need you guys to step up and be teachers right now. I need you guys to begin prophesying. I need you guys to do many wonderful works. I need you guys to be casting out devils, but I have to train you and teach you and release you first. If I didn't release you, nobody should be doing it because they don't know what they're doing in a lot of instances. They can do some great, but we can do harm than good. If you're not delivered too, you can transfer spirits on somebody else. We're not having those transfer spirits. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want you guys real quickly to grab what you want to give to God because we're going to seal what God gave you. You guys need to be determined. You need to be able to say it out of your mouth. 
I am not going to have seven times strong, seven times uh, the problems I used to have. I'm not going back. I will pass these tests. I will be good ground. You need to begin to speak over yourself. I'm good ground. I'm good ground. The seed is sown on good grounds. I shall remain. I shall remain. I shall remain. I shall remain because the devil was seeking to see who he may devour. It will not be you. It will not be you. You will recognize what the enemy has tried to do, and you will be the one who will be able to help others, and you will be the leader that raises up. Leaders are born in crisis. Leaders are born in battle, you guys. Warriors are made in battle. There is no warrior without a battle. You are made in battle. You become a good fighter when you fight. So you have to raise up and begin to know how to fight, and you have to know how to win. You have to go with God's weapons. You have to go with authority. You have to go with power. You have to break the assignment of the enemy. And God didn't give you any type of spirit of fear. He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. He gave you ability to stand. He gave you ability to have discernment. He gave you ability to release angels. This weekend, after the people of God, a lot of you guys saw me command those angels to come back. I didn't chase an angel. You commanded the arms to hold up. They held up. I commanded the mouth to be quiet. You heard me talk about it, but now you see me do it. Now you got to say, oh God, I, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. It's your time and your season to step into the deeper things of the prophetic. It's your time and your season to quit quitting. It's your time and your season to get out of your flesh. It's your time and your season to say, what is that thing on me that attracts those people to me? I rebuke it. You don't come here anymore. I'm not the one. You will not prick me off. I'm not a Miriam. I'm not an Aaron. I thank you, Lord, that I'm faithful. I'm dedicated. I'm committed. You got to begin to speak it out of your mouth. Because he's seeking for power. Okay. He's seeking for you to be offended. He's seeking for Amen. you to be weak. You are not weak. You are strong. And because I warned you now, you guys are going to stay. Not today, not tomorrow either. Amen. Okay. Amen. Grab your offering. I want you to connect to this word that you will not. He, God said, I am, if there's a scripture that says, I am not of those who shrink back. You say, none shall be plucked out of my hands. I will not be plucked out of God's hands. I will not be manipulated, tricked, deceived in Jesus' name. You got to begin to say it. I want you to speak it to your seed and I want you to sow your seed. Just put, I shall remain where God called me to be. You can just say, remain. And God knows what you mean. I want you to go sow your seed. I want you to get get an offering and, and look at the numbers of fives and five. So if it's 5,000, if it's 500,000, if it's five, if it's 555, yesterday, Papa was talking about sowing seeds in 12. So it was like, okay, 12, 12, 12 is what I sowed because I was like, I needed it to keep it. It's the month of 12s. So we're building altars. Today, this altar is so you will not shrink back. Today, this altar is so you will discern, discernment, discernment, discern these things. Today, this altar is for the calling on not your strength, but the strength of God. If you feel weak, say, Lord, let the weak say I'm strong. Now his strength is applied to you. You will not be one of those people that loses what God has given you. You are not one of those who will shrink back. You have the fire of God. You have the power of God. You have the abilities of God, and they will raise up within you. Go and um, I receive. Go ahead and do the offering, uh, Desiree. Uh, I think you can do the uh, do the, um, the the video, or Melanie or whoever's doing it. Please. Thank you, Jesus. I learned that you do exactly what you say you're going to do. If your word said it, you're going to do it. You gave me a rainbow word. You spoke it into my life and it began to manifest. The devil came and tried to trick me and say it wouldn't happen. It looked like it wasn't possible, but you came through. If your word said it, you're gonna do it. 
You gave me a rhema word, you spoke it into my life, and it began to manifest. The devil came and tried to trick me and say it wouldn't happen. It looked like it was impossible, but you came through. Father, every each and every person, Lord, is connected right now, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you love your people. I love how you are touching them, God. I love how you are blessing them, God. I love how you're bringing them through, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are increasing them in mighty ways. Father, that you love them enough, God, that they shall remain. That you love them enough, God, that they shall not turn back. You love them enough, Father God, that they shall go, Lord Jesus, and, and, and have vision and be able to see. I, Lord, as, as they even touch their eyes, God, will open their eyes to be able to see, God. And Lord, as they touch their, their, mouth, their nose, God, open up their spiritual senses to discern you, Father God. As they touch their ears, God, Lord, open up their ears so they can hear you, God. I pray that they're following the prophetic instruction, and God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, as they touch their heart, God, open up the eyes of their heart that they would know the hope and the glory to which they're called, Father. I pray for increased discernment in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release it over them, that they would discern the things of God. They would but see every trap coming, Father, that, Lord, that they shall remain in you in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon that's formed against them shall prosper. They will move in mighty ways, God. They will increase this day. I call forth the increase, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you should use them, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be connected and joined to you forevermore, God. Lord, I thank you for increasing their finances. I thank you for increasing their wisdom, for increasing their prayer life, increasing their love language with God. You are their highest priority, Father, and they shall prophesy. They shall have dreams. They shall have visions. But, Father, even greater, they shall move into their office and their role, their God-given role, will manifest through all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 I receive. Um, amen. I, I receive. Amen. I was just looking amen. at the, um, Amen. I receive. I was looking at LaShawn. Amen. amen. I receive. LaShawn. Amen. Um, amen. I receive. Let me, grab, I receive. let me grab LaShawn real quick. Hey man, I receive. LaShawn, can you come off mute real quick, LaShawn? Let me see if I can get her off mute. LaShawn, let me see if she can get off mute. Is she there? Yes, I'm here, mama. Hi there. So I was just looking at you and um, go ahead, talk some more so my thing will pick you up because it keeps going to somebody else. Ah, is she not there or is it on mute? She's on mute, Mama. Okay, LaShawn, you're on mute. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Amen. Okay, okay keep talking. I'm over here or I'm right here. <laughs> Wait, that's so, okay. I there I am. Okay, I don't know why. It keeps focusing on Tish, but it's not on Tish. It's so weird. She doesn't uh, have any picture, Mom. Yes, I do. It's up. Hey, she's on video. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a, I'm just trying to see. I just, it's, yeah. LaShawn, LaShawn has, I can see LaShawn's picture. Really? I, I can see, I can see your picture, but I don't know. I see your video. The video is, is not up. I see my video up. Yeah, your video. I can see your video. Oh. Okay. Wait, wait, no, no. Now I can't. No, that's weird. It is not up. That is so weird. I don't know what's going on. Okay, I see you now. Well, hold okay. on. Let me let me try. Let me see if it'll show. I don't know why it won't. Hide. Okay, there you go. Okay. Ooh. Then see that, that that it was a distraction and a disturb. Hey, it was a disturbance in the force. <laughs> now, Lashawn. Yes, ma'am. Um, I saw a spirit of fear that's not from you. That's it's in your family. And yeah. it's been fearful of everything. Like, I mean, fearful of all kinds of things. Fear. And God said, you have to be the one to combat this spirit of fear. And the God said, I want you to begin to prophesy, but there's this spirit, this voice that keeps telling 
telling you you're going to make a mistake that tries to keep you from prophesying because I saw a mighty prophetic calling on you and God said that your fears are the only things that hold you back is that you you listen to the the, the words this voice of fear and so God said he wants to silence that voice but he wants you to to go after it and not be fearful anymore because you can't walk in faith and fear at the same time he's saying and I see it's root and it's literally it's in your family. It's 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 rooted. The family is has missed so many things because of fear. That would be true, Mama. Yeah, even your mother has fear. Lots of fears. It was transferred yes. to you. And so, yes. is, is, is this true? Very very true. God said, I'm trying to, I'm under, I'm breaking it. If you allow him, he will take it from you. So right now I'm going to pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of fear off of this family that she could go forth and she could do the will of the Lord. It will not hold any person in this family back any further and they will be able to elevate and they can do the will which God has sent them to do in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I receive. God's going to do some things. And, and, and every time you think about why you can't do it, I need you to begin to decree why God can do it. He said, let the weak say I'm strong. So God is giving you this ability to go forth strong and you shall have a transformation today in, the, in that area from today forth in Jesus name. Hold on. Let me just pray for somebody over here on, uh, uh, on Instagram. Um, da, da, ba, ba, ba. oh wait, oh no, I don't know who this lady is, but I'm gonna pray for her. Oh, Facebook, every time I try to go live with you guys, it acts weird in the last couple times. I might try, but it might, it might knock you off. So, um, hello. Uh oh, can you hear me? Let me see if I can hear you. I can't hear you. Let me see. My sound might be down. Oh, it is. Hi. Can you say something? Huh. I cannot hear her. Hello? Oh, wait a minute. I can Hello? hear you. Yep, I can hear you. Oh, it's on here. That's weird. Say it. Talk again. Let me see. Let me try to hang this thing up. Say something again, sweetheart. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, I got getting his connection. I don't know what's happening. I couldn't get out of it. Had a, oh, oh, good. Here, oh, let me let me do this. Let me pray for her. I mean, let me try to grab this other person. Ah, uh, no, no, cancel. Hold on. I'm trying to grab. I'm, the devil is a lie. And pray for a few people and oh wait I I pulled in the wrong person I was trying to pull in Devin hold on Devin I'm coming for you let me see oh kababaka kabarabasata shady diabaka hold on I'm telling you, Instagram is doing some weird stuff this morning. I'm trying you guys to get you guys. I'm gonna have to do a private, I, go to the WhatsApp group tonight and then I'm gonna prophesy over quite a few of you guys. We're gonna do some deliverance and stuff because it's acting up and then I can tell you guys the rest of the stuff Papa did. The only my spiritual kids though, I'm not trying to tell a bunch of everybody to the world. Well, I, Instagram, I'm trying to call you guys in. Noni, hi, Noni from Kenya. Uh, she said, hold on. I have a hard time getting out of bed. No motivation, no fire to pursue my passion. I want God to be my anchor. Please pray for me. Um, I want you, to, I'm gonna give you an assignment and I'll pray for you on our live. I want you to go find my, uh, my message I did like a year ago. It's called Get Your Oil Back Don't or Don't Give Up Your Oil. Look for that message and then message me. That's going to get that prayer there is going to restore you. 
Because I saw where you gave your oil away and you didn't know why that happened. And I saw an attack that came and stole your oil and it's been difficult for you ever since. And God's going to turn some things around. And it literally came through a person that was jealous of you. Okay. So let me see. There's a bunch of you guys I want to pray for. I was getting some inner interference because i know we did some damage like because he had some plots and i was like i'm telling all my you're not coming after my kids so what i'm going to do is you guys just go make sure you're in the whatsapp group um i have one of the girls updated today uh so that if you sent a request and you're not in the whatsapp group you'll get added today but i want you guys to make sure that you um that you are uh uh you are connected because mm -hmm. we'll do some prophetic and we'll go deeper later on this evening um because i'm trying to call people in and it's not letting me let me just go through and just look on 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 here and see if there's a couple people i can i can speak a word to and i may just wait till this evening amen 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 destiny god said he just wants you to be encouraged that he's he's elevating you in the area of your business and things right now that things are going to go well and um that next year will be a good year for you and i see some even i don't know some funding coming to you that's going to help you and elevate you and push you right where you need to be amen so i just agree with the lord for that in the name of jesus um, Taylor, God said, I've touched you this weekend and you shall keep what you remain. And he said that he has blessed you. There's the fire you feel on the inside. I see something like on the inside of you. She's just smiling. It's just all on the inside of you. God said that he's been touching you in the name of Jesus. I see a bunch of you guys who've been dreaming profusely ever since, especially this weekend, just dreaming, 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 dreaming. And God said, I'm about to give you guys prophetic instructions in your dreams. Your dreams are about to shift to have prophetic instructions. So greater dreams in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so I'm not going to stay on long because I want to come back and prophesy to you guys later. And I love you guys so much. Um, I'm going to do some more real deep prophecies later on. And we're going to do some deliverance. I really feel like God wants to teach you guys with mm -hmm. deliverance so that you guys can set some captives free. And if you guys need to get connected to the WhatsApp group, it's 562 grab your pen 562-418-4689 and we'll come in and we'll do what we need to do there okay so um god bless you guys tremendously god is awesome he loves you he loves you he mm -hmm. loves you and he's bringing you into greater heights and greater and greater measures i thank the lord so um yes it was don't let your oil run out something about oil don't let your or keep your oil or don't let your oil run out it's on youtube and just put in my name and it'll pull up and that that will message will really bless you. And if you feel like you lost your fire or you feel like you gave it away and you say, well, how do you give your oil away? Well, um, I did a message, this really crazy message that was one of my best messages, you guys called sex with your ex and prophet passion told me to do that message. And I, it took me like two and a half Lord Jesus. <laughs> months to, did you see that one? Yo, you were there. That was a mighty day, right? Yes, I saw that one. <laughs> It oh was, my god remind me to tell you something about that when i see you <laughs> man. Man. and one of my ex-boyfriends was like he tricked me to get me like he thought i thought i was helping him with business you guys and he was like i just need to hug you i was like, you need to hug me I was like what are you talking about like i just need to hug you he was like if i hug you i'll be good for like 45 days but if i hug him you guys Watch this. This is what happens. He was after, if I oil, this is my oil and I'm full. This is what happens to me. I'm on empty because he was feeling good because he falsely got something from God from me without going and accessing God. I gave him some of my oil and I felt empty and he felt good. That's why a man or a woman, somebody can sleep with you and they feel all right and you feel sick after because they took something from you, but they got something in return. They took a deposit from you and you were left feeling empty because you gave them something that you worked hard for. And so you were left feeling empty. So you are the one who needs to fill back up. So that's why you gave it away in some gossip. You gave it away in an argument. You gave it away in some strife. You gave it away. You gave your oil away. 
They just tricked you and took your oil. So for him or some sex or masturbation or anything, it took your oil. So he was trying to get me just to hug him. He said, I don't need to sleep with you. I don't, I know you don't sleep. I don't know. You know we've never had sex. I just, it's something about you. But when I was the whole time I was talking to him, I never was my boyfriend. Every time I even talked to him on the phone, I felt empty. I felt empty when I got off the phone. Like he took something from me. He liked talking to me because he said, I'll be good for like 45 days. It was the beginning of the pandemic. And he tried to trick me to hug me so he could steal some of my oil. Y'all ain't hearing me. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I hear you. Wow. wow. Amen. Amen. Hey, mama. Deep, deep, deep. I hear you, mama. I hear you, mama. T. But he told me what he wanted. He told me why. He's like, it's something from you. You have something that I need. And when I hug you out there, I don't know how to have sex with you. I don't need to. I, don't need, I just need you to hold me. Just hold me. I was like, ah. That old devil slick, boy. Right? And so, and so, and I realized that's why I used to feel empty. So my, 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 my message, sex with your ex, was talking about that whole thing, how I was giving him something. If I did that, I would have been giving him something. That moment of pleasure. Now my oil is depleted and I feel, I feel terrible and yucky and I feel empty and I feel like I lost something because he took something. I didn't just take it. I gave it to him. If I, if I took that temporary moment of hugging, there's something that's not, that's temporary. Now God gives you somebody, you guys will feel like your ear increased together. You can increase together, but no, I can give it up, somebody can trick me or I can give it to somebody it's not intended for. And now you empty trying to get back on full. And guess what? They running around like this with your oil and they didn't even go to God to get it. They just took it from you and they feel good. They feel excellent. They float not quiet down and they're like, hey, and you over there crying and sad and shook up trying to figure out what happened. It's like when you deal with a narcissist, you get in an argument you know you shouldn't get into, you feel empty. You feel like you've been going around in circles. You feel like you went through the ringer and they feel like they're on full. They don't, they're like, what's wrong with you? What you crying for? You're like, they're like, what? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just try to help, Amen. You. I just try to help Amen. you guys. So you Amen. Don't that was a good you helping talking. me. You helping me, you helping me Mama T. <laughs> you helping me. The devil will bait you to take that from you that's important to you. And then you trying to get it back. You wake up like Samson. You think you have strength and you're like, I ain't got no stress. What happened to me? Well, I feel like I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Why? I'm emotional. You, you done gave it up. <laughs> and you want it back so bad. That message on the oil, the one I'm telling you on YouTube, by the time I was, you're done, you feel like you got full really fast. By the time you're done, there's two of them. There's part one and part two. The oil just came right back. And I was like, now protect it. No, you ain't get my oil. You can't have my oil. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. So when people want to just hang out, I'd be like, what, what? They're like, oh, you're kind of hardcore. No, no, no. It's not that I'm hardcore. I would let my guard down for the right person. But why, why do you want to hang out with me? What do you want? What do you, what you after? I know what you want. You want my oil and I'm not giving my oil up to something for something temporary. When God wants you to have things that are permanent, he wants you to grow. And if they're in their life, they should add, you know what they should be doing? They should be adding more oil to you. If they come and God sent them, if they came with a business idea, if they did, they should come doing this to you. They should come filling you up. By the time you left that conversation, you shouldn't feel empty. You should feel like, oh, that was good. You should feel like you got more. You should feel like you feel fuller. You should feel like that was excellent. Oh my goodness. I need some more of that. And every time you guys help each other, when you really help somebody, you guys can pour into each other. It shouldn't be you feeling depleted. Amen. I receive. Absolutely. You can be the only one. Amen. You're the only one pouring. You're the only one giving. You're the only one helping financially. You're the only one giving advice. You're the only one going when there's a help and need. They can't come across the town for you, but you run across town for them. The devil is a lie. You know, no, you should be both prospering and the devil's not going to be taking what God gave you in this season. So I just want you to know that God wanted me to tell you so you guys don't have any loss in this season. Your gas going to stay up full on this season. You're not going to be on empty. Nobody's riding on empty. You're not going to have, have emotional up and down roads 
roller coaster. You're not going to be in the flesh, falling into sexual sin, falling in over off the job, fighting with people on your job. You're going to be laughing at the arguing with your spouse because they called you something that used to affect you and be upset about it. You don't have to defend that old person. The devil is a lie. You're stable. You're committed. You're anointed. You're prosperous. You're whole. God wants to bless you. You Amen. will not fall in this season. You will not go down. You're not giving up your oil for anybody. You're going to hold on to what God gave to you. In this season, you will have plenty. You'll be the lender and not the borrower. You'll be above and not beneath. You don't answer to anything that's not your name. You don't answer to sickness. You don't answer to doubt. You don't answer to depression. You don't answer to the B word. You don't answer to sadness and sorrow and suffering and pain. That's not your name. Your name is encompassed in the name of Jesus. You are hidden in Christ Jesus. You will elevate. You will do great and mighty exploits in Jesus' name. You will raise up like never before. You will bless and you don't need to to worry about person. You are a blessed person. You are anointed person. You are a prosperous person. You are a protected person. You are in the fullness of God and you shall not go under in this season in Jesus name. Amen. 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 I receive. So I just pray for you guys. And God is elevating you. I I receive. I I wanted to speak to uh, Devin. I'll probably try to call her and give her her word. But uh, later on, guys, we'll come back. Uh, God bless you. I'm going to go back to my little quick vacation for a minute. Um, <laughs> I'm not supposed to be on this morning, but in Tara Monique does have a mighty message on the battlefield of the mind. If you get your mind intact, if you get the word intact in, in you, you can withhold anything. And we want to keep that going and we want to keep growing in Jesus name. So I love you guys. Thank God for you today. Um, speaking blessings. If you have not registered on lifeline, TNT.org, I saw people starting to register for prophetic school in January. Please register for our prophetic school. You can be on Zoom or you can be in person. And we love that. And it's two days um, a prophetic school. And you guys can definitely grow, 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 grow. So I thank God for each and every one of you guys. Uh, know that I'm praying for you, knowing that you guys are lenders, not borrowers. You are above, you're not beneath. You are definitely walking in the full of God. We didn't get the WhatsApp number, please. The WhatsApp number is 562-418-4689. It's 562-418-4689. And please turn on your notifications on YouTube. We need you to click like and share. Uh, Prophetess Taryn, you can follow. Uh, We usually prophesy to you, but today it wasn't letting me pull you in on Instagram so I could speak a word to you guys and elevate your life. You guys, I thank God for you. Uh, Sign up with us, connect with us, lifelinetnt.org. And on Wednesday nights, we have our leadership training class. And so we are going to have some fire. I'm really going to teach you guys. I want us to go into some deeper things of God. And we're going to have some mandatory awesome classes. And those who graduated or went through the graduate you guys still have to finish your assignments so we'll continue to ordain you guys to be ministers of god so i love you guys thank god for you i see you guys i see hey uh anthony i'm glad to see you and and danielle roosevelt thank you for posting roosevelt i appreciate you thank you god bless you tracy i see a lot of you guys uh and i'm praying for you guys and i see the difference on your face and i see god countenance coming inside of you and it's a mighty blessing so i love you guys don't go too far stay connected on the whatsapp group so we can share with you and if you guys post uh, pictures post the pictures in the encounter 2020 group please okay guys have a good day love you bless you love you mama 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 Love you, Mama. Thank you. The God of our service bigger than your mighty dog. It's United States. The country tells me. There was healing in his wings through the power of Christ. Love you. 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 Amen. Don't forget to download our CD, Lifeline TNT Worship. The one word, Lifeline TNT Worship. Go to Apple or anywhere. Download the CD. Holy Spirit, come and fill us up. Bless you guys. Back to the tickets, resurrect and power, man, and live in me. He took away. He could wing so above all these evil things. Cause even when I strayed and I slipped, he forgave my behavior that was sick. 
Even though this life has been a trip, permanently praise on my lips. His love extravagant and overflowing. Rest for the weary, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. He make everything he make brand everything new. Just the way that he do when his better plans too. I gave him masters in return, he gave me beauty. Joy is my strength when I'm moody. Let the weak say I'm strong cause it's power. He making the hero out of coward. Dynamite, don't miss. To your teeth, dynamite, dynamite, don't miss. To your teeth. Your presence there is nothing but the love. Holy Spirit come and fill us up. Dynamite, don't miss. Dynam, dynam, dynamite, don't miss. To your teeth. Your presence there is nothing but the love. Holy Spirit come and fill us up. Dynamite, don't miss. To your teeth. Dynam, dynam, dynamite, don't miss. To your teeth.